Hello, everyone. I'm Jeremy Geffen, Executive and Artistic Director for Cal Performances, and it is my huge pleasure to have with me today the founder and director of Mark Morris Dance Group, Mark Morris. Hello. Nice to see you, Mark, and we're hugely looking forward to being able to see you in person, which is a delight that we haven't had for um, for nearly two years, which uh, is probably the longest that uh, that Berkeley has gone without you. Well, f since the eighties, um, forever, 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 Jeremy, forever. <laughs> no, that's the thing. It's been like, well, first of all, don't even use terms relating to time because they have no meaning at all. I'm sorry to tell you, but you know, as our, which is, it really is our home away from home, the whole Bay area, specifically Berkeley, specifically Cal performances. It's like, we're missing sort of half of what we normally do. I mean, we're missing a lot of what we normally do, but a big part of that is very frequent visits to your place and ours. And so we miss that tremendously. And we would have been there a couple of times already, but We'll just have to settle for it soon instead of then. <laughs> well, what I love about the way that you're you're coming back is that you're coming back in in a way that you haven't been here for a while, which is in a, in a repertory performance. It's usually you usually come with big evening long pieces, and and now we actually get to see uh, some of your some of your shorter works. And as I was browsing through your very impressive catalog this <laughs> afternoon, I. I realized how much work you do, you do and how frequently you put out uh, uh, works of medium um, and and large uh, large scale length. Uh, it, you're quite prodigious. Well, let me say something about that because on the one hand, we are so thrilled that uh, Cal Performances um, has produced, co-produced, and presented just about everything I want to do and on the big scale stuff. It's like, yes, let's go. So all of the operas and oratorios and evening length things, big projects, commissions, world premieres have been going on there forever. And it's so crazy because uh, most audiences, most, uh, dare I say markets, most cities only get the repertory shows. And I, I love, I love shorter forms. I love a short story and a poem and a, fortune cookie and a haiku and, you know, a, an emoji. I love those forms of communication, um, but we never get to do them at, at Zellerbach because we have these big shows to put on, which is a wonderful problem to have. I'm not regretting any of that. I love it. But to be able to show a piece of sort of uh, not miniatures, but cha more chamber size stuff musically and just the forces, the scale of the whole thing is smaller and therefore a different kind of representation, a different kind of intimacy and variety. So we're thrilled to be doing this. We're thrilled to be doing any show in a theater with an audience. That's what we're thrilled about. <laughs> um, well, it, 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 the pleasure will be all ours. I, I'm also really excited about the fact that this covers quite a lot of uh, territory in the, uh, 1998 to two, uh, 2013. Um, and uh, you, you, we start out with I think the, uh, the the most mature of, of the pieces on the program, um, Dancing Honeymoon for, from 1998. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. No, I don't know the years. I know I was in it and it was a while ago, but yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and I was wondering, was this the first uh, first piece you did with Ethan Iverson? No, no, not by a long shot. I don't think, I don't know. Maybe I'm just lying, but uh, no. Um, it, it turned up in the repertory because I wanted to do a dance that was, that fulfilled my adoration of popular uh, band music, basically popular music, the song book from the twenties and thirties. And so, uh, there were a couple of medleys that I loved recordings of two great English singers, Gertrude Lawrence and, um, Jack Buchanan, uh, singing these medleys of many you know, there's Gershwin and there's Cole Porter and they're uh, blends of songs, but they're little chopped up medleys. They're very fast. They're two in a row. And I choreographed those as two suites. And then, of course, because I'm me, I wanted to do it with live music. So we, uh, Ethan arranged it and, you know, very much in the style of the period. And then I've had several different singers do it. Lately, I've been doing it myself. And in this, in this uh, manifestation, I'm singing one of the parts and of 
very good friend of mine is a wonderful singer uh, who I knew, knew from Seattle. Um, Mary Sherhart is singing uh, the other part. So it's, it's the band and us and my dancers. And it's called Dancing Honeymoon because why is it? One of the songs that I don't use is called Dancing Honeymoon. <laughs> anyway, um, no, and we probably use it anyhow. So that, that's from, you know, the years, I don't know the years of anything, but that's the provenance on that piece. And it's a, it's action packed and it's not too long. Well, and, and I, I love that it's, it's around po popular music because so much of uh, the, the music, the, well, the pieces that you bring to us are based on, you know, almost canonical classical works or, um, or slightly, uh, um, edgy uh works like the actually the second duet uh jen and spencer um which is on a work by is, is it by lou harrison or, H or henry cowell like oh I, no it's henry cowell um, henry cowell yeah um uh, oh that am i supposed to talk about these i'm happy to yeah yeah <laughs> jen and spencer okay um well let me just tell you first uh first of all jen and spencer is a dance that is called jen and spencer because the that's the name of the original dancers <laughs> So that's what it's called that. And um, the piece of music is, um, is for violin and piano. It's by Henry Cowell. And it's, you know, I, I was, oh, that's what I was gonna say. Henry Cowell is such, was such a fabulous composer and so responsible for so much of American music and so much of West Coast music, so much of um, what we homosexuals identify as our music, queer music, it's nonsense, but, it is sourced that way. And he was a very, very important figure who uh, um, was a great influence and a great mentor for Lou Harrison, for example, and many other people. So his, this very, very interesting, rhythmically wonderful, he was a great tune smith, which is, that can be an insult to people for some reason. If it's like, it has a catchy tune, run from it or something. I don't know why I'm drawn that way. So it's a weird little, uh, argument between a couple of people and a couple of instruments that's what that is jen and spencer and then the, the final piece on the program which is the, the the longest work is is uh well i assume it's called v but um could it also be called five it's called v for some simple reasons one is it's a quintet mm -hmm. right it's a it's a, a it's piano and string so it's five instruments and it is it's an odd number of dancers. It's two teams of seven. No, is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, um, two teams of seven. And uh, they are in very often in a V formation because that's what happens when you send it people. If you watch, uh, it's a it relatively new thing for uh, that, that wonderful uh, K-pop band, BTS, who are just the mm -hmm. most famous of many bands. Um, and also the style of TikTok, where because it is such a limited, uh, screen range and it also goes back to mu movie musicals of the 20s and 30s you have to stand like this in order to fit in the camera as we've learned from zoom you can be far apart here and but it goes away right so we have this v shape or it's inversion and that's just how people fit best if you'll see watch bts someone's always in this position and the others are jostling for it and it makes you able to watch it's an amazing shape that I think it was invented by the camera, not by a person. So I did that this way back, this was years ago, um, I don't know, 2001 or something. And the piece of music, the uh, uh, Schumann piano quintet, the super famous piano quintet is such a, uh, let's say an evergreen of chamber music and such a fabulous, brilliant manipulation of zero material. You know, it's like Bach at his best, he has like three notes and you know a whole evening of it and somehow Schumann did this in this in this crazy piece of music that is breaks every rule of of classicism of classical music it's like oh no you can't do that and just page after page that's what he does and it took me I thought it was a relatively straightforward piece of music and then I started listening really in earnest and starting to choreograph it. it's like wow this is so beyond what I think is regular. You know, it's an amazing, bizarre, complicated, satisfying, thrilling piece of music. And it's, uh, we haven't done it for a really long time. We're just bringing it back uh, to the repertory. So anyway, um, it, it, it's exciting because it's a lot of new dancers and it's, and we're back. I keep saying we're back on stage, which is the biggest deal of it, that we're in real life 
with real people. So that's V. Um, and, and you alluded to some coup de théâtre. Uh, or, or, mm. is, that, is that going to be a surprise, or is that something that the, the viewers here will get to, to hear from you? Oh no, I'm I'm revealing it uh, to you right now for the first time. I guess we have now because of popular demand added an intermission to our show. There wasn't one before, but I think people can get ready to start adding a little bit. You know, I, I don't yeah. like a useless intermission. I know, I mean, of course it has to, you have to sell CDs and candy bars and stuff. That's important, but, and you need to go to the bathroom, certainly. Um, but because of the whole COVID thing, everything has been quite short and quite contained. This isn't a long show, but it needs a break in it. So the beginning, the very beginning of the show is a piece that I just choreographed uh, specifically to be done outdoors, specifically as a piece d'occasion, uh, we did a performance at the uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park outside on the noisiest waterway in the world, the East River that had ski, you know, jet skis and helicopters and, you know, tourists and, you know, the paddle, but whatever those things are called and the Circle Line Tour. So it was an incredible activity and bicycles going through in the middle of the day and I wanted needed something really loud and I needed something that was be meant to be played outside. And so I used some of the um, very short selection, four selections from Handel's water music, uh -huh. the F major suite. So everybody knows this music. Um, and so we did it, you know, it was, it was at the water. Okay, it was water music. It was meant to be played loudly on a boat and we were on Water Street and it's like, what a better, what better title is there? Okay. so. It's a small piece, and this is for a, a, a transcription, just for a string quintet uh, of this, these wonderful little pieces of Handel. And um, that's it. So it's four movements. The piece is called Water, and it starts the show off. So mm -hmm. it's, it's that, then Jen and Spencer, then Dancing Honeymoon, brief intermission, and then V, which is a full enough dance that it really needs its own place on the show. So we, you get a bonus. I just made it up. It's pretty good. And it'll, it's kind of a world stage premiere is what it is. So That's, you get that. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, that is absolutely, absolutely delightful. It will be wonderful. And one of the things that, that, that strikes me about that is that so often the music that you you choose for for your works is actually not music that was was uh, written for 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 dance. Um, and okay, the handle may not have been written for dance, but almost everything in it is in a dance music form. Um, right. Uh, like all like all Baroque music is automatically de facto. It was a dance, whether you meant to dance it or not. That somehow that's where all the rhythms came from, which is nice. But I there's a lot. I'm sorry to say this, Pache, other choreographers in the world, but a lot of music written specifically for dancing is so specifically written for dancing that it's numbing i'm sorry i like surprises you know i like the i like the wrong beat i like it's too fast mm -hmm. i like what the hell is that and i like being lulled by familiarity and the the wonderful sort of consonants that we western ears sometimes crave so i like a big variety of stuff um i don't like boring um but also you know all music was uh contemporary music at some point and I don't think everybody wrote music just to put everybody to sleep. That's what lullabies are for, but not everything else, you know. So I like to I like to wake people up. Well, I, one of the other things uh, as a former musician that I appreciate is that um, when you when you choreograph these pieces, you are choreographing them as they would be performed on uh, if as if the musicians were were center stage. So if they're the the Rubati, um, it, 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 it's it's very musical what you do uh, with these pieces. Well, whatever that means, I <laughs> love I agree with you. I think it's super musical also. And you know, the the band, the musicians are part of our team, you know, it's the Mark Morris mm -hmm. dance group and music ensemble. And that's what we do. That's every day in rehearsal. It's every show we do. Um, you know, actually, when we premiered uh, Water, that new piece, it was, of course, recorded because we were outside and you need to blast it out so it can yeah. compete with the ferry boats. And, you know, a, a critic, of course, mentioned that unlike me, usually 
there was recorded music. It's like, that's because you can't hear a damn thing, you know, when you're outside. <laughs> so I love that. So we're doing it live because we can, you know, and I, I don't have a big orchestra for it. You know, we should have, we should have a big period orchestra playing that, but you know, for like 10 minutes, I think we'll be fine. So that's another thing where I have no problem with an adaptation or uh, they, what's that called? Uh, a reduction that's kind of insulting, but a transcription for fewer instruments to yeah. make a mu piece of music happen. You know, in, in the, still in the early 20th century, people were learning, some people were learning the symphonies, Beethoven symphonies by reading them on the piano, you know, yeah. whether it was good or not, you could still get something from it. And with recordings, that's all gone away. So let's just say I put the music kind of first and I put the dancing kind of first. They're together and I, we, I can't live without either one of it. Um, can I ask you one question about water? Is that the first uh, in real life piece that you choreographed uh, since the beginning of the, the pandemic? Like, or in, in real space, I should uh, I IR something. Yeah. Um, oh, it's getting to be so sunny and interesting where you are. The light is oh, changing beautifully yeah. as I'm going to dark. The opposite's happening with you. What a world. Um, I th well, actually, yes, because the the only other piece that I really made up from beginning to end is the the 16 Brahms waltzes that I choreographed for a live stream. So that's never been performed, uh, you know, uh, let's say um, without borders, the borders of technology. It's never been performed in front of people who are watching it besides being at home. I wonder what I'm even saying. It was... Uh, not a, it, it's not a Zoom experience. So we, we streamed that, we did it with masks because we were still shooting in a small room and we're very, very careful about all of it. And that dance uh, will happen at some point uh, in real life. But this is the one that we were doing shows outside already. We were at every botanical garden around the boroughs you can find, which was just wonderful because we hadn't been dancing for people. So these dances were, had to be done outside, which means shoes, you, you know, you have to, you know, uh, compromise on certain things. You're on a hard floor instead of a, a sprung deck. So it's harder. You're outdoors. People were walking by. So we were doing these shows, which were very popular, a big relief for the dancers, a great return for audiences who would show up wherever we were. It was really great. Quite a few for, you know, all summer, but no theaters with lighting and, you know, the frustrations yeah. of that, which are different. And, you know, you can control things in a different way. So, for, to actually be in the theater, this is my short answer. Um, water is my first dance that we've done since being released to a certain extent. <laughs> well, um, I I love that we're going to get a document of uh, of the feeling of return. Um, and I think on that note, I, I I will thank you for your time before like uh, whatever happens behind me supernovas, <laughs> and, and I, get absorbed, it's I get beautiful. I get absorbed into it. Um, but it, Mark, it's it's just such a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, and will be um, an incredible moment to welcome you back to uh, to Berkeley. Well, I have to tell you, we miss this like crazy. Not just. Uh, doing shows for people and being appreciated who doesn't like that you know applause and seeing human beings but to be going back to Berkeley is really it's about time you know so it's really a, it's really a homecoming and we always feel so welcome and glad to be there so thank you wonderful